never were so many facts explained by so few assumptions. Welcome my mere mortalites to another book review, the book review for those who want to transcend beyond mere mortality. And that was an excerpt from the blurb of the book I have for you, which is River Out of Eden by Richard Dawkins. This book was published in 1995 and it's a simplified explanation of Darwinian evolutionary theory. So there's plenty of arguments in this book for this and then also arguments against some of the counterpoints of people saying, no, this isn't true. So this book contains the essential core reasonings of why evolutionary theory is true. The book itself has five sections and I'll go through them very briefly here. The first is the digital river. So this is an analogy for how human genes and natural selection occurs through the branching of a river of going down different paths of why some species deviate from others here and there and what this actually means. The second is all Africa and her progenies. So this is talking a little bit about the history of humanity, where we came from, how we're descended from certain people, why we all might be descended from one person known as the African Eve. The third is do good by stealth. So this is talking really about why there's a gradual continuum, how natural selection is very, very slow and how it seems these imperceptible tiny changes can result over a long period of time into being these tremendous differences between say us and apes or us and other mammals or us and even fish. All of these things are tied up in this tiny idea of just how a small change can really make a big difference over a long enough period of time. The fourth is God's utility function. So this is talking about why genes are in it to maximize their own survival, how they're pushing and pushing to get on to the next generation. So. It explains some things such as the 50-50 gender split, why you'll see almost across every single animal group that there are 50% males and 50% females and why even though there are forces which you would think would push it towards one of the extremes, more females and, and fewer males or vice versa, this isn't actually true and that this is the reason why. The fifth and final is the replication bomb. So this is talking about replication amongst genes and amongst people and then also of mutations within these genes. So he really is talking about why he would expect to see life elsewhere in the universe based on the fact that through the splitting of a cell, through natural selection and he really implies that natural selection is a universal concept and that you would expect to find it everywhere. This would result in life and other forms on totally different planets, which you could never expect to see in you know, our lifetimes at the very least. So all of this is tied up into really that question of evolution and him just trying to explain it across these different areas. The book itself isn't super long. It's only about 160 pages. And while I said it's simplified, that doesn't mean that there is no science in it as well. So you're going to learn about mitochondrial DNA. You're going to learn about the structure of DNA with the two base pairs of AT and CG. You're going to hear about plenty of studies on bees and their dancing on other animals and how they behave. So even though the concept of the book is trying to push it off in a simplified manner you still have to have a good base of science of understanding behind it otherwise you will get lost the book review is in its next stage its next transition and we're on to the themes now and the main one is obviously evolution and it seems to me it's to answer why 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 are we here what's the purpose of this all the core aspect seems simple on the surface but when you dive into it, it seems to get harder to understand Dawkins goes over the basic principle. What is evolution? What is natural selection? But then into some of the nuances, and this is where it gets more trickier. One of these, for example, is success doesn't make good genes. Good genes make success. And he's very particular about this. You always need to be focused on the genes. It's not particularly the body that is important. It's not because I am super wealthy and famous. I'm Brad Pitt. I can have as many babies if I want, if I you know, gave to a sperm bank or whatever. He's like, no, 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 no. That's not that person. He's not the important thing. It's the genes within him. And the genes are the driving force for all of these things. And even though on the surface, it might appear that because someone is successful and this can be because they're in a certain environment or because they look a certain way or sort of these things, it's always the genes underneath and that's what you need to focus on. He's also very explicit that we need to be careful about certain things because humans love purpose. We love seeing things. We love understanding what's the reason behind this. You know, if I found an ancient ruler of some sort in the ruins of a city, 
I would want to know oh, what's this for what and trying to put purpose behind all these things when maybe it was some dude who just found a piece of metal and threw it out on the street. Maybe it wasn't a ruler. So he goes over some examples of this in the book of how certain things might evolve and we want to see the purpose behind it. Well, what exactly is this for? What is this doing when it might be a byproduct of something else? Maybe it doesn't have a purpose. Maybe it is actually harmful in a certain way, but it's beneficial because it comes along with another thing. So this is an example I'm creating here, but beautiful music. You might be tempted to say, wow, this amazing thing to exist. Therefore, the ears were made to hear this. Ears were made to allow us to fully comprehend, wow, what is this thing? How exquisite is this? And he's very particular. No, 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 there's no made because made implies that there is something behind it with a purpose, a reason. And he says, no, natural selection is neither cruel nor beautiful. Natural selection simply is. There's no purpose behind these things. These things happen. And he's really trying to take away that idea of probably a God because he is very atheistic in, in his reasonings. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in that there's no driving force behind these things. Well, there is a force, but there is no free will or a person or an emotional sentiment behind that. It's simply just pushing forward. Onto my personal observations and takeaways. And as I referenced just before, it's told in the classic Dawkins style. So it is ruthlessly logical, bordering on dismissive. He is not one to suffer fools. He himself is strongly atheistic. And while he's not joking around, not, not taking people seriously, not making fun of them, He's also pretty blunt in his views. He's not encouraging them. He's not trying to spare feelings. If someone comes up to him, he'll say, you're wrong and this is why. So he'll receive a letter from a bishop or someone like that saying, the eye is just too complex. There is no way that evolution can explain this. It must have come from an entity or some sort of creator. And he'll say, no, these are the reasons why. Bang, 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 this is it. And he'll use that to explain why the eye was created, why bees do this funny dance of theirs, which seems illogical until you can understand the reasoning behind it, why flowers and orchids and these sorts of things will get pollinated by bees because they have the perfect shape and all of these sorts of things, he'll wrap it up and just say, no, the blunt classic Dawkins style. The book is lighter on the technical side of things, so there isn't so much science in it and it's more heavy on the actual theories itself. As for the five parts that it was split into, I didn't really see a connection between them or why they were laid out this way. There was no logical conclusion of one to the next of why this occurs and this occurs. I think it was sort of five separate things he wanted to talk about with regards to evolution. And so he just put them in five chapters and there it is. So if you're looking for a book that really flows from one to the next, this isn't it. It's more, here's one section, here's another section, here's another section. In summary, it's a Richard Dawkins book. So you know what to expect. It's evolution, it's evolution, and maybe a little bit more evolution. I feel it presupposes that you know a bit about evolution beforehand, and it's more going into the basic overall principles and how they're applied in particular situations, and also talking about some of the pitfalls of its explanatory powers and why you might assume these certain things from these principles, but you actually have to be careful about the nuances. In total, I'm giving the book River Out of Eden by Richard Dawkins a six out of 10. It was okay, it was not too difficult, but it was not too easy at the same time. Me personally, I've only read, I believe one of his other books, which is The Selfish Gene, and I immensely preferred that one to this, but that's just a personal preference. And he has, I think 15 other or more books, which you can read. So if you really wanna dive into evolution, he's your man. He's probably one of the main dudes who really explains it in a clear, concise way. And there's multiple books you can choose from to try and get which way you want to emphasize or which way you want to learn about it. So that's it, Mere Mortal Lights. We've come to the end of another book review. And I really do wanna thank you for joining me to this point. What are your thoughts on evolution, on Richard Dawkins, on his style? I would love to hear it in the comments. Other than that, if you can do all the nice things, a like, a subscription, hitting the bell really does help me and the channel. And I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Kyron out.